Hello and a very warm welcome to Middleburg. The question being posed today in this FMB Classic Clash, are you red or are you green? Middleburg, our, our host school, and the visitors are HTS Middleburg. HTS Middleburg are the Roy Buller, and you all see lots of things to do with uh, the Red Bulls during the course of the afternoon. And the home side, who you're seeing there, middies, they call themselves, and uh, they will be playing in green. Let's give you a little taste of what has already happened at the ground today. And uh, first of all, we'll have a look at the school rankings. You'll see that uh, Middleburg HTS are in 13th position. This is a log produced by the Rugby 365 website. So uh, it's not set in stone, but uh, I think you will find that the sides in the top 10 are pretty much the strongest in the country. And here are the home school. Everybody has turned out. Wonderful stadium here. It's an athletics track with the rugby field in the middle. Middleburg HTS are captained by Villandre Kutzenberg. And he has uh, been part of the South African under-18 sevens team that won gold at the Gold Coast in Australia earlier this year. And that is the home side, Middies, as they call themselves, captained by the loosehead prop, Willem Steenkamp, and coached by Gert van Westezen. There's the replacements, and uh, when you think about the two schools, I'd like you to think if you're green, Vainant Klaassen, of course, uh, one of our Springbok captains, and uh, when you think red, think of Bucky's Buerta. He's an old boy of Middleburg HTS. Let's show you a little taste of what happened earlier then. Here come the Roy Buller out onto the field, supported by their under-16As, who won their game and also the cheerleaders with the red body paint on the left-hand side. Now, what happens is that they then progress over to the stand behind the post to our right, and they say hello in dramatic fashion to all of their supporters. And then, after them, onto the field come Middies, the home side in green. Different words you'll hear to the old tune Men of Harlech as uh, Middies take the field, and they will do the same thing. They will go over to the stand where all of the uh, children who are currently at their school are standing, and they will pay their respects as well. It's a wonderful tradition associated with both schools. And uh, if you suffer from dizziness at any occasion, then uh, just watch out if you're forced to do one of those. So we're in mining country here in Middleburg. Stefan Breitenbach is our referee, and we're ready to go. This FNB classic clash. Are you red or are you green? Alongside me is Gareth Wright. Gareth, are you ready or are you green? Well, oh, Andy, what a build up to this game. The form book goes out the, the window for this derby game. Speaking to Turkey Strait and the coach of uh, RTS Middleburg, he's highlighted the fact that they are 28 kilograms heavier in the front rows and they'll look to get the ascendancy up front. But I think we're in for a cracker. Nice hard field, fantastic conditions, and uh, we all set to go here. And we are away. And it is the Roy Buller. RTS Middleburg playing from right to left on your screens. Middies in the green. And it is an FNB classic clash, and very much a classic clash. These two sides uh, throw everything into a contest like this. And it'll be a bruising battle by the looks of things, battering all the way back to the halfway line, and quickly available for the Roy Buller. Well. So if you look at the ticker at the bottom of your screen, Harty S in the red, and Middleburg her school uh, in the green. And that'll be the first scrum turnover ball. It was a rolling ball, and they couldn't produce the ball. Well, good start by the Roy Buller, but unfortunately just getting held up in the contact area. Hanging Cross. position over to Middleburg High School. They've got uh, a slight wind at their backs so as you look at the screen blowing from bottom right to top left, and they'll probably look to use it. Oh, that's come straight out of the sun. And you can actually forgive the defender there. He did well to recover, but now, of course, that ball is in the air. So Middy's in the green. will be looking for a turnover here. 
at uh, the Roy Bullock. No. If they can go forward, they will retain possession. They can't go forward, and the scrum goes the way of Middies. Well, Rion Deploy just trying to feel that ball out of the sun, and clearly the tactic from uh, Middleburg High School is to hold the oh. heavier opponents up in the air and try to turn them over that way. Right. Scrum. So Middies with the feed through Xander Kritzinger. Front rows have gone down. Some big lads up front for both sides. Coach. Fine. Square and steady. Referee Brayton Buck wants it square. Remember, this is schoolboy rugby. And Cross. so the engage is slightly different from what you're used to in Super Rugby and uh, Vodacom. Point! Trump. Now, out to fly half Bruce, and uh, he has missed it. So turnover ball I for the Royal Bullet. And they go stampeding towards the half line. Backwards. The crowd are really into this. Digging it out is uh, Rowan Hous. Middies up very quickly in defence there, and nowhere to go for the Roy Buller. Advantage. Advantage. Looks like there's a penalty advantage here. <coughs> Nothing the emerging, and so awesome. not rolling away is the call. Well, pleasing to see the Roy Buller showing a willingness in the early stanzas to keep the ball in hand. And uh, so refreshing this at uh, schoolboy level to, to exhibit all their skills and uh, it's put them into a favourable position after that uh, decent touch finder. Well, Captain Willem Steenkamp just not rolling away and making the tackle, infringing referee Breitendag, correcting calling the penalty. So here go to Roy Bullock, keeping it uh, tight at the moment. That's the 22-metre line of middies. <coughs> Referee gives a, another penalty. In fact, it's just a scrum for knock-on at the line-out. And uh, it'll be Hartius Middleburg, the Roy Bullock, to feed the scrum. Coach. Why? <coughs> well, well Stefan Ludenberg, he's got a definite weight advantage at Tartet for the Roy Buller. Coming in at 113 kilograms, a mountain Coach. of a man. And he'll look to get the right shoulder Why? so that his backs can run on foot. And here they go. Oh, lovely little cut through there. And this is going to be an outstanding opening try. Rowan House with the show of the ball, and under the posts goes the scrum half. Well, it was a great scrum, 8-9, just sliding through the defence of West School Middleburg, and it's a very good start for the Roy Buller. And it looks like Rowan Hoss is going to take the kicks as well. Went to Grant Como week for the Pumas in 2011, and the conversion is good, and it is De Roy Buller, who lead by seven points to nil. We've had five and a half minutes. Well, Ron Kuss just got around Hansi Nordia, who was ball watching, and he scanted over for the opening score in this game. It's a good start for the visitors. And some good stepping there as well. The Middies will want to hit straight back. Looking to keep that ball in play, and the, the chasers are after it, but well done. There they go. And more red jerseys at the breakdown than green. And that ball comes back on the Roy Buller side. That's a clever little kick from Post. Another one to chase. Oh, but that's how firm the ground is, you see. 
I think uh, if we were if we were in uh, a different province, that ball may have held up before the goal line. Well, this field is bone dry, Andy, and uh, they've just got to be careful that they don't overcook the kicks because it will roll on this field. Middleburg High School need to get their tactics right. They've got two left footers for the Roy Buller at 9 and 10. Rather try to squeeze them up against the left-hand touchline as opposing to what they're doing at the moment. Now, here go the Roy Buller, and they are very keen to keep that ball in hand. Host was there for the clean out, but uh, it was picked up by one of the forwards who rumbled forward. And now a little bit of an opportunity on this left hand side up from fullback was ruined to ploy. <laughs> and the penalty has gone the way of the visitors. Beg your pardon, it's a home team penalty. Well, the block run is coming into play, holding the defence in midfield. Middleburg guilty of uh, again not catching up as a defence and luckily for them they've earned themselves a penalty but it hasn't gone very far and they're still under the cost in these early stages. So middies will have the feed to the line out. Henry Hubert is their hooker. Look out for Christopher van Leeuwen. There he is. He's uh, a metre 95. He's very big for a schoolboy. And there's another tantalizing kick and it is in touch yeah nothing that uh, alan miller could do about that now beg your pardon it was uh, actually jan rents well efficient play from the line out it all started with a good uh, take in and a great box kick jan rents just caught uh, ball watching into the sun there unfortunately for him push back now here go middies. Roll 12. Advantage. Forwards need to get there. <laughs> and uh, penalty in front of the post. I wonder whether they'll opt Lost. for the three points here or look for the momentum to continue. Yes, they will kick at goal. Stepping up to take it is Jacques Bruce, the fly half. Kicking into the opposition supporters, but uh, no ill mannered booing there. I'm happy to say, and uh, home side are on the board. Well, the tackler is just not rolling away, trucking it up in the midfield. And number 12, George Fritz, the deputy head boy of HTS Middleburg, infringing there at the breakdown. The tactic was absolutely spot on by the young scrum of Xander Kritzinger. He's plugged away in this bottom left-hand corner and it's paid dividends. He needs to employ that tactic a lot more in this first half. So, restart coming from Lohan Bennett for Hartius Middleburg. And that's come off the side of the boot. thinking about the ball coming out of the sun here we are heading towards noon so it's right overhead a uh, big cheer from the middies supporters there and that ball bouncing capriciously but well taken by ruin deploy and a good distance on that kick it's an enormous hoof from Ruin Deploy. Now, middies will have to start from deep right, inside right, their right, own right, half. Right. Now, what, watch right. the boys trying to Dirty see right. this out of the sun. It hasn't gone forward, says the referee, and Waldo Morris takes it up. Take well cleared. Right, follow it, follow it. Now, the chases are off after this. Jan Rents is heading up there as if uh, he's got a ghost following him and there he is he very nearly got there as well
But between Philip Krobla and Jan Vuljma, they shouldn't let the ball bounce. It's going to be at their peril if they carry on with this. And uh, it hands the ascendancy back to the Roy Bullo, who are in a favourable position. Look for their Lucies to truck it up in midfield and play from there. Kicks from hand, 6-4 to four at this stage, really not too much in it. Nelius Smith to feed the line for the Roy Buller. And uh, well won at the front by Petrus de Besson, but his oh, scrum oh. won't thank him for that service. And uh, it's resulted in the knock-on. So it's a very old-fashioned uh, tactic at the line out there. Well, Christopher Leuven, he's, he's proving to be a menace at the line of time. He gets up in front and it's sloppy ball for the Roy Buller. The, the Middies uh, players coming through on mass and they've turned Cuts. it over. Why? Well, we've had trouble at the scrums with the engagement. Let's see how we go here. It's better and good ball for Xander Kritzinger. Jacques Bruce looking for a little bit of a gap. Some of the crowd thought that was high. And that's what the arm is out for, so penalty for a high tackle. No, in fact, he's given it for not rolling away. Flaff was a little slow in getting to his feet there, Jacques Bruce. Well, Jacques Bruce had runners coming from all over the, the show, but it closed rather quickly, and, and Baldwin Morris being penalised for not rolling away. That's the second time that the, the Roy Bull have been penalised at this area of the game, and Stefan Bradenbach it looks like uh, he's got his finger on the pulse, and it won't be long before he goes to the pocket if this continues. See the AFGRI silos in the background. This is, of course, farming country as well as mining country. Middies winning the ball well. Remember, 35 minutes aside in schoolboy rugby, and it's running time, so it will be 35 minutes and not 45 minutes. Cut. Fine. Strong. Push back. Rona Hose taking back. Finding his fly half, and uh, as Gareth Wright mentioned, Lohan Bennett and uh, Rona Hose both taken left back. footers. Now underneath this is uh, Ruin Deploy, and there's a chance here for the Roy Buller. Yeah, they've just seen that the green jerseys were, were had come up very flat, just chipping it over their heads and getting back onto the attack down in the corner. Well, we saw the stat earlier on, Andy, about uh, the number of kicks between the two sides. A lot of aimless kicking in my book at this stage. Rather keep the ball in hand, look to create the overlap and play from there. Yeah, well, perfect conditions for handling rugby. Now, the Roy Buller trying to do exactly that. Good tackle there on the 22-metre line by Middies. And uh, the Roy Buller will have the feed. Full day of sport here, of course, being a classic clash. And we've got netball going on. We've got hockey going on. And uh, I must say that uh, FNB have really Cross. rolled out the red carpet. And there's, there's lots of uh, lovely Stop. pictures of all of the teams who are playing in the pavilion where we're commentating from. Well, they're in the middle of the field, the Roy Buller. They've got a lovely opportunity to attack the blind side, but it looks like they've stacked the, the left-hand side and, and will probably go that way. Well, there's a few provinces Cross. around the country who wish that they could uh, right. attract crowds like this. Strong. I reckon we've got the best part of 10,000 people here. Right, 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 right. Here you go, Roy Buller. It's uh, backwards, backwards, a strong oh, tackle coming in from Christo Mayer. But still chances here, Deploy again joining the line and causing trouble. Jan Rentz is held five metres short. And this is danger for Middies, but uh, there's a full in touch. Last man up is uh, Lodeval, the eighth man. Well, good willingness, ball in hand, uh, but fantastic scrambling defence by the big number eight, Lodeval, saving a certain try. Back it comes to Hose. 
Loan Bennett is scythed down in front of the posts, and it's uh, still a chance though amongst the tight forwards. Really Roy Bullard trying to find some space out wide here. That's a good step. Looking for a pass on the inside. And over the line for try number two. And it looks as if it's uh, Alan Muller who scored. Well, we've been crying for the ball to go through the hands. And have a look at Lawrence Besson. Just an inside-outside step. He shrugs off the defender. He manages to, to get the offload. And fantastic finishing by Alan Muller. And that's the second try for the Roy Buller. Well, as you mentioned, fantastic finishing. That's a... That's a true winger's try there. It was certainly not a stroll through. Rowan Hose looking to improve it by two. Assistant referees like it. And that is 14-3 in favour of the visitors. And here are the Red Crew. You can hear the crowd in the background shouting out the numbers. And those of you old enough to remember the chaps who used to do that at the Sharks games. Behind uh, the line, you have to do a press-up for every point on the board. Use it once. And in a high-scoring game, you can lose a lot of weight. Use it now! Backwards, backwards, backwards! Now, here goes Jacques Bruce. Midi's uh, just running out of options there. Three-quarter line was fractured. Push back, Roy. Slow ball coming out. Load of oh! tries to batter his way over the gain line there, and there's a little bit of uh, off the ball incident there involving uh, Ace Ehlers. Well, really slow ball for Midis. The Roy Bill are employing a, an umbrella defence where the backs are shooting out from the outside end, and it's creating slow, slow ball for Midis, not really giving them too much opportunity to attack with vigour. Trainer is coming on. Somebody's in need of attention. And there's the crowd, I mentioned. Well, there, there are stands uh, all the way around the ground, and uh, people are standing five or six deep as well, where there aren't stems. Well, here's a run from Lodeval. Good counter rucking by the, the Roy Buller coming in uh, later in the shot, but it's terribly slow ball, and the scrum off and fly off have got no option at this stage. So if it's green, it's Midis, the home side. If it's red, it's Hartius Middleburg, the visitors. And it is the visitors who lead by 14 points to three in this FMB Classic clash. Crouch. Boy. Scrum. Yeah, oh, not a scrum. Oh, that's a nice little loop move, and it's produced space on this right-hand side. Oh, it was a dangerous tackle coming in from Lohan Bennett on uh, Jan Vika Vema. And uh, the referee eventually has given the penalty not for that, but... Uh, for not releasing on the ground. Chos decides to keep it in hand. And uh, yeah, there's a big gap down there. Nobody in position for middies. And that's not the worst tactic. We're showing good enterprise, uh, the Roy Buller tapping and going, but ball in hand, they had an overlap on the right-hand side. Instead, they've decided to kick it and position back to middies.
cleanly taken there by Hansi Nodier. Held in the back by Lodeval. You said no! So, transferred to Xander Krissinger. And that's going to give his uh, team a chance. Coming up quickly there was Benny Mashabane. But uh, the Roy Buller have got it. And they've got a couple of options here. George Fritz making uh, a few hard yards. And now here's the fullback, Ron de Proy, who gets the pass away to Jan Rens. Ball is turned over, but it was in touch first, so it'll be a middies feed to the line-out. Middies under the cosh here. We've got 13 minutes left in the first half, and they trail by 14 to 3. Well, Ron de Floyd did so well. He just hesitated in passing, which allowed the middies defence to come across and snuff out that attacking move. That's much better ball for the Roy Buller, and as I say that, with uh, nobody around him, J.P. Simon has just put it on the ground. Well, five handling errors in the opening 22 minutes, Andy. And at this stage, uh, both sides will be looking to keep the ball in hands and just tighten up a bit on their skill sets. Now, middies, that's uh, one for Mashabani to chase. You mustn't let that ball bounce. Mashabani looks like he might have grabbed that on the second bounce. And now middies trying to ruck over and oh, produce that ball. <laughs> Not coming out. And uh, the scrum goes away of Leroy Buller. Well, Mashabani is lightning quick. He played for the Pumas last year in the Craven League and has represented the Pumas at junior level in sevens. Get the ball into his hands. He's got good feet, good turn of speed, and uh, he needs to, to really get into this game a little bit more at this stage. <laughs> Referee doesn't like it. Glory can't be shared. It's... Uh, not entirely true, of course. Could be a draw. Coach! Well, this is the fourth reset Point. scrum. Referee Stop. will have to sort it out pronto. And this time a shrill blast on the whistle by Meneer Breitenbach. So the penalty goes the way of the visitors. Not happy with the bind, I think. Super kick. Well, illegal scrumming, but for my liking, uh, just losing the bind, the loose head of uh, of uh, the right pillar, compelled with the fact that the tight head of Middies is scrumming in. So it's, it's a bit of give and take from both sides. They need to sort it out. So really good attacking platform here for the Roy Buller, looking for their third try. Right, right. Five, five. Oh, and that's turnover ball. Off. So Middies in the green have a chance to clear. But uh, it's turned back over. So now there's danger. Counter rack is good. Back it comes from Chos. Once again, uh, Duploy is up in the line. But this is turnover ball, but uh, the referee accidental. says no, knock on. Uh, in fact, uh, accidental offside. Well, it's great to be here in Middleburg. All the talents are on show, uh, not only the rugby, and uh, a wonderful occasion. Yes, it really is. It's, uh, Coach. A lot of people have put a lot of Point. effort in Scrub. to a day like this. Bow up, bow up, bow up. This, is, this is just the sharp end of it. Inside. 
Long kick downfield coming out of the sun, this time Ruin Deploy uh, is equal to it. The tack tackle coming in from uh, Weimar. And that ball will bounce and run forever. It's gone too far again. So that's uh, the blue jerseys of the visitors. It's the first team rugby team that plays in the red. meter line of the home side <laughs> referee will give the scrum to the visitors well Alan Miller as good as he's looked in the opening 27 minutes he has a tendency to let the ball bounce and that's gonna cost him in the end he needs to learn and on this hard field he needs to take the ball out of the air cleanly because it just alleviates that pressure Touch. Point. Yeah, there's no question who he's supporting. <laughs> Penalty going the way of Middies. <laughs> Quickly taken, the referee is not happy. Well, super work by Xander Kritzinger. He managed to get his bigger number eight, Christo de Jager, to ground, competed well on the ground. He had all the rights to the ball, and well done with referee Brackenbach. He's got that decision spot on. So time running out for middies in this first half. Six and a half minutes remaining. They trail by 14 to three. Ball. And they're playing for this trophy here. And there's going to be a man of the match for both sides. They also get uh, prizes. Crowd attacking position here on the 22 for Middies. Shark Bruce sending it out. It's quickly available at the breakdown, but uh, the referee saw a knock. So that might take the momentum out. Well, both sides at halftime, their coaches will just have a word to both players, sets of players, because their working contact is not great, they're not carrying too well at this stage, and their ball presentation is very sloppy. Coach! Point! Strong! Close. Lovely pass on the inside. Just inside Middy's territory Point. now. Looks as if a penalty has gone the way of the Roy Buller. Yeah, in these conditions, it's kickable. And that's what uh, is going to happen. So Rowan hosts the scrum half 45 metres. Well, it was great play initially by Rowan Hoss, the overhead pass that he got in, utilising the blind side. And that uh, put Middies into a defensive position on the back foot. And well done by the Roy Buller, showing a good willingness to put ball into space. Now, Rojas has a tough kick here. He's got the wind into his face, and he'll have to start it just outside the right hand upright. It's a nasty breeze that's coming into him, and uh, you really need to focus on this kick. Well, it's fallen over. He's uh, got time to reset. Not too much time. You can't blame the wind on that. There's barely a breath of wind here. Needs to give it a biff, and he's shanked it. Tactic here to go short again from the 20, 22 restart to let Middies contest, but it's not a great kick and they've turned it over. So the Roy will have another opportunity to attack here. We've got plenty of options. That's a, taken by Deploy at pace. 
Rents is there to try and dig the ball out. Now the forwards arrive. Here's Rowan Hoes. Middies may have uh, stolen this. Yes, it's available to them. Lodeval doing some good work, and then the hack through. Might not be actually the worst kick in the end. Jan Rents could do nothing with it. He's gone all the way back to his own 22. And now he's going to try and start something. That's a big tackle, but he's presented the ball beautifully through the tackle. Now out from Hoes. And uh, the cross kick coming in from Lohan Bennett. Plenty of time for middies here. And that's a big return. The trainers are still on for the injured player. We can show you the crowd, and they are having a wonderful time, let me tell you. Well, good clean-up work by Philip Robler. He read the play well, wasn't the greatest of kicks by the Roy Buller, and he's found a, a sizable touchdown that far right-hand touchline. Cleanly taken by the visitors, and here they go. Host with the box kick. It's causing trouble, that box kick. On this occasion, it looks as if it's just gone a fraction too far. I've been impressed with Rowan Khos, he's got a, a good feel for the game, he kicks well with both feet and he looks like he could be in the mix for the Pumas Craven Weeks side later on in the year, Andy. Craven Weeks in Polokwane this year, in July, and uh, that's one thing about Supersport cameras uh, covering so many schools games, that uh, you do get Roll familiar down, with the better players ahead of Craven Week, never used to be the case. Yes, it's another turnover and a good drive from the back row of middies. That's the halfway line. Play on, play on. Now the flat ball from Kritzinger. And the mark is made by Ruin Deploy. He saw that one coming a long way back. So we're in the last minute of the first half. Two converted tries for Middleburg Hartius. And uh, the visitors lead by 14 points to three as the clock ticks down. Jacques Bruce, that's uh, in touch. But, uh, I think carried back. Well, if the Roy Bullock can get a, a try just before the break here, I think it'll really help them with the ascendancy going into half-time. They've beaten the more enterprising of the two sides, and a try would really be the death knell for this middle side at this stage. Loose ball and nothing to play for. Well, again in the lineup being contested and just taking his half the ball, the little strum off Ron close. And this should be the last rifle of the first half. Kick it out, go to the break, regroup, and come back with a definite plan in the second half. Middies need to do. Coach! Boy! Scrum! It's a lovely low action, uh, low angle shot. Shows you. The pressure coming through from Leroy Buller. Mashabani has uh, got there, couldn't hang on. Turnover ball. So when this ball goes dead, it will be the end of the half. And there's uh, the big form of Stefan Liebenberg. That's a penalty. High tackle. What a crazy tactic by Jacques Bruce. The half-time Hutter has already sounded. All he needed to do was 
kicked the ball out. Instead, he's now handed an opportunity for the Roy Buller to extend their lead. So Rowan Ghost will have a go at goal. He's run the game pretty well as Rowan Ghost. He's had good ball to work with. Scored the opening try and uh, has converted both of the tries. And it is over. That will be end of the half. And it is the Roy Buller, Middleburg, Hartius, who lead Middleburg Hood School at the break by 17 points to three.